respected madam speaker madam today again today again it is my privilege that you are in a chair Adil. madam yes while budget we are opposing this speech budget of 2017 and 2018 our leader and the honorable chief minister of west bengal mamta banerji gave reaction on budget 2017 i start my speech quoting her quote a controversial budget 2017 which is clueless useless baseless missionless actionless and heartless unquote very good i fortunately i had the i am having the privilege i and i i am i will come there sir fortunately i have the privilege to work with our honorable finance minister in few matters as his junior but i have never seen him so heartless <laughs> as earlier which has been done in this this year while giving the budget speech he is not that heartless he is, he is having a big heart i i know i understand but his compulsion is that that he has to be now he is has become heartless only for this speech itself not for any other reason now i have great great respect and great regard from him i enjoy his uh, blessing also that's right the budget does not reflect any road map for the country or for the future from the present government who has lost all its credibility by reason of number of steps including demonetization have been taken place which affected public at large of this country there are madam there are jugglery of words and figures in the budget the biggest failure of the government is that the budget is silent in respect of costs and benefits of demonetization the finance minister the honorable finance minister did not give any figure in the budget speech on two points one how much black money has been extinguished number two how much the exercise cost the nation the budget has neglected primary education icds and nutrition projects the budget also did not speak that how much amount of black money lying in foreign banks in other words there is not a single word about offshore accounts in the budget the budget speech demonstrates a clear admission of the government that private investment is in the doldrums in 2015 to 2016 the government has created 1 lakh 50000 jobs which is far short from their promising and creating of 2 crore jobs in a year gross fixed formation which is called as gc c gfcf is a widely used and measures for including private investment according to the economic survey growth of gfcf in the last three financial years was 2014 4.9% and 2015 3.9% and 2016 minus 0.2% this has come down micro small and medium enterprises msme are the low cost producers and job creators demonetization has forced nearly 80% of msmes to close down 80% most msmes are not companies they are proprietorships or partnerships 5 lakh 97000 to 
six lakh ninety four thousand companies filed income tax returns, and amongst them, only two lakh eighty five thousand make profits. Cutting down, cutting the corporate tax rate for MSAs from thirty percent to twenty five percent will therefore only benefit about two lakh seventy thousand thousand MSMEs. If the taxable income is modest, the benefits are also modest. It will do nothing to increase sales or create new jobs. On the other hand, if excise duties and service tax had been cut, it would have boosted demand and revived the many MSMEs that had shut down. Almost, Madam. Uh, sorry, Deputy Speaker, sir. Almost 12 lakh power looms of Maharashtra have been closed down <coughs> by reason of the <coughs> demonetisation. Diamond industry in Gujarat, by reason of demonetisation, is in such a bad shape that Bengali diamond cutters have forced to return in our state. I will request and I will invite the Honourable Finance Minister. If you get time, please come to West Bengal. I will show you. I will personally. I will show you how many workers have come back to West Bengal from Gujarat, Kerala, and Bombay by reason of the demonetisation and the industries have been closed down. I will personally. I will show you. I is an invitation to you. Please come and see. See. From your own eyes, what is happening there? The supply chain of leather industry in Bengal is in shambles. So is jute, tea, textile, handloom, and handicrafts. Fact remains that Moradabad, Firozabad, Mirat, known world over for their glass bangles and sports goods, are in miserable shape with maximum units closed. The unorganized sector of India provides 80% of jobs, and the demonetisation has destroyed that. It is unfortunate that the honourable finance minister. It is really unfortunate that there is not a single sentence in your speech in respect of the unorganized <coughs> sector. It fully establishes the government's heartless attitude towards the. Unorganized sector itself. Budget have given credit to farmers, which will never reach them because 92% villages have no bank in India. The government demonetisation policy have already destroyed cooperative system by not providing them cash, which is the main stay of farmers for credit. Now the government is playing with. Jugglery of words. While you have given some tax relief to somewhere, you have quietly put some surcharges somewhere also. We can understand very well that when you are giving in one hand, you are taking away from the other also. It is shocking that when the non-performing assets of banks have. Reached Himalayan heights for rupees six lakhs crores. The budget has allocated only rupees ten thousand crores, only for capitalisation of banks. This is a this is really a cruel joke for the banking sector. It is nothing more than the joke itself. Investors are ineligible. Or unwilling to borrow, and banks are unable to lend. Therefore, credit growth to all industries is at all time low, and turned negative in October 2016. If we look at the NPA situation, non-performing asset situation of public sectors, I am giving just the figures. Deputy Speaker said, as on 31st March 2014, gross NPA. Lost 4.5 percent. 
31st March 2015, it is 4.6%. 31st March 2016, it is 7.8%. And 31st December 2016, it is now 9.1%. This is the NPA. This is the NPA. Now, loan accounts, what were performing as on 31st March 2014, have become non-performing assets under this present government. Budget 2017 and 18 have not given any benefit to any class of people of this country. It is nothing. Talking about the poor people, talking about the farmers, Talking about the peoples of the remote area, all our big words are there that will not reach to the poor people at all. Yesterday I was also hearing a lot of speech from the different persons, different speakers from here who are very mostly for us about the village people. Someone was talking about that. I was telling them that I am also coming from the rural place. I am representing rural areas. Now the, no doubt agriculture. This time cultivation is extremely good. But today, they are not in a position to sell the crops because of the non-availability of the cash. We cannot ignore. You may speak about the cashless society. For 70 years, a system which has been grown up, you cannot by stroke of a pen, overnight, stop it. We support cashless, but you cannot do it within one day or two days. It will take time. If I, if I correctly followed, if I have correctly followed the Honorable Finance Minister's speech on the other day, that no, this cashless cannot be possible on the, within few days. It will take time. Maybe 40 percent can be done. In the city itself it can be done. Just one or two minutes. But it is not possible in the village areas. Our rural economy is based on cash flow. It is, we can't ignore, we can't shut our eyes to the reality itself. If you go to any village, anywhere, it's based on rural uh, cash flow system. Therefore, sir, Deputy Speaker, sir, budget 2017-18 will be remembered for not extending the benefits to the people of this country. And it will be remembered as a damage control budget. India will muddle through another year of hopes, delight, and aspirations unfulfilled. With this, I am ending my speech. Thank you, sir.